everybody. I hope you're all doing well in quarantine. It's actually been a little while since I made a resin review video. Uh, I have a couple of ones that I recorded that I, that I didn't get around to releasing. Um, and then uh, Soraya contacted me a week or two ago, said they had a couple resins uh, and they wanted to know if I'd be interested in testing it out. Of course, I always want to test stuff out for you guys. So, you know, I asked what the resins were, you know, because different colors don't really interest me that much. But they said they had a, a navy gray, which is right in front of me, coming out, which again, color, color matters to me a little bit because of the way I like to take pictures. But in general, I'm not concerned with color, right? It's how, how well does the resin print. And they told me that the navy gray, even though it's sold under the fast label, is not a fast resin. It's a slower resin, like the Soray Sculpt or the uh, Epax Hard. So they also told me that it was kind of made for miniatures to hold really high detail, very little light bleed, and also a matte finish. So it sounded to me very, uh, in, in a lot of ways, very similar to the Epax Hard, which anyone who follows me on Facebook or has watched my reviews knows Epax Hard Gray is like my go-to resin. It's, it prints just better than anything. Um, although the, the Uni's Z-Mud even though it's a, 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 like an orangey beige color, uh, also printed incredible. But again, for the kind of pictures I like to take, their actually color comes into account because it was a little harder for me to show off the details there, but that's also a great resin in my opinion. So I would, honestly, I love Soraya resins, by the way. I use, when I want something cheap and good, I use the Soraya Fast Gray, you know, like especially on my big printers and I'm printing terrain or stuff that I'm gonna use a ton of resin. I do use a lot of the Soraya Fast Gray. So I'm a Soraya fan, even though Epax Hard is my favorite resin. Uh, so I, honestly, I wasn't like super excited to test the resin. Everyone says their resin is good for minis and holds detail. But again, I've been having such stellar results with the Epax Hard Gray that eh, I, I, you know, I'm not as excited about testing resins as I used to be. So anyway, I got it in, I poured it into the vat. It is a very pleasing like dark blue gray, which if you can see, on the figures, you know, you'll see close up, but hopefully from there you can see the color a little bit. It's it's a very dark gray with a little bit of blue mixed in. The finish, as they promised, is very matte, and I'm going to start floating these pictures around my head so you can see these figures. But but let me just jump right into for people who don't, who don't like to stick around for the long version of the videos. This gave me possibly the best prints I ever got. This resin, and I'm I'm doing all my tests on a Sonic Mini 4K. So it's not the printer. I'm using the same three printers for all my tests and all of my printers give me the same results it appears. But this resin, and again, I'm floating these pics so you're looking with me. Uh, there's like no light bleed. Every detail came out crystal, crystal clear. The Every scale on this Dragonborn is so clearly defined. Uh, the Every tooth, if you look at the mouth, uh, and you look at the dwarf female, her on other resins in the past i looked to see like are the eyelids well formed can i see them at all did they print out here they're like so blisteringly clear it's almost like they printed out too distinct it almost looks unnatural how distinct they are and on her again look at these pictures and at, after the video i'm going to show you you know we'll, we'll look at them close close up high res photos and analyze them a bit but she has a, a a band on her left arm which i'll show you here which has a little design which is so thin that most times I print resins, even on my Sonic Mini 4K, that design really doesn't come out, or if it does, it's not clear, clear. This, as you can see, this came out like crystal clear. Like this is just, this resin printed amazing. So that, that's the short reviews, it printed amazing. So, but I'm gonna do break tests, as you know, because everyone's question when I posted some of these pics on Facebook was how brittle is it? I couldn't answer those questions because I hadn't done the break tests yet, so let's do it. So something I never usually do, I save the supports, uh, just because I figured I, it makes me so sad to break figures. I'm going to do it because I know you guys want to see it, but it really makes me feel bad. So I also saw, let me just see what happens with the support. So let's, as I bend it, you can hear it snapping. So it's got some flex. This is bent past the halfway point before it, before it snaps. And okay. Yeah. Past the halfway point on those thin pieces. Now, normally you guys know if, if you remember from my break test, I usually print up a spear and break it because that's, that's thicker than the supports. And usually the thicker these get, they actually, they're harder to break, but they snap with less, uh, less angle on the, on the, on the bend. They don't bend to the same degree before they snap. So here's the spear test. 
Let's bend it. Okay, that went, it actually broke, I'd say be well before 90. It's probably more like 45 degrees. So it's not a high degree of flexibility there. I really, really, really don't want to do this, but I'm going to do it. His, ah, look at the sword. Okay, well, that's actually huh, better than the supports. Whoa, that was actually impressive. Wait a second. Let me let me do that again. Let me see how far I can go. Oh, I'm going to make me so sad. Okay, I just bent it all the way over. You can see, I bent that all the way over. Hopefully, wait, if I put it too close, it might go out of focus. I just bent this sword in half without it breaking. Now, that's obviously because it's thinner. If I try to do that with his arm, that's not going to happen. Let's... Huh, I still can't believe the sword, I can bend the sword, it's, it's sitting there at 90 degrees right now. So that's actually pretty good. Um, let me, let me just break his finger off, see. He's got finger pointing, which, look, I'll show a photo again, close up of his hand. So let me just break that finger. Okay, moderate amount of force, but it is a, I mean, it's a tiny little finger. Let's, uh, okay. Yeah, well, there I just broke the glue part of the hand off. Let's see how he does in terms of the legs. Yeah, I can, I'm giving some pretty good force, and I don't know if you guys can see, he's flexing. Not flexing his arms, the legs are flexing, the material's flexing. That's, that's actually pretty good. Let me see how much I squeeze to break it. Okay, uh, I'd say moderate amount of force. Not, not incredible amount of force before it broke, but it did flex before it broke, which is good. Okay, not bad. Now, let's let's... Oh, it's so sad to see such a beautiful figure snapped off. Oh, I'm not going to snap my second print of him. I did the tailed version for the second print because what I did was uh, this first print, good as it looked, I don't think I had the settings dialed in correctly exactly because new resin, so I was guessing. So I lowered by just a little bit the resolution, uh, the resolution, the exposure time on the layers, and this this version came out amazing. So again, the close-up high-res photos at the end. Uh, and like I said, this is my best print of her. I'm pretty sure this is my best ever, or if not my best ever, equals what I got off the Epax Hard Gray uh, and the Z-Mud. I mean, this this thing is just, and I know you can see, it is, it is this dark gray-blue. It is gorgeous to look at. Like, if you are play D&D or any war game, if you put this down on, on your table, it looks good. You don't, I mean, I'm not making excuses for my pile of shame that I don't paint. I have all these paints behind me. I do paint some stuff, but I'm just saying this resin like this looks great unpainted. Uh, it, this, this color naturally catches the light, so it kind of looks shaded and highlighted, you know, without doing anything with this real matte finish, which is just looks, I mean, to me, it looks beautiful just on the table like that. But be that as it may, Good a print as it is, and I said, you know, I really literally think this might be my best ever. You know what I have to do? I have to, uh, I have to toss her around, but let's first start with the low toss. I'm not expecting her to break, because this resin, as you saw, has a little flex, like the sword. Well, bent back the other way, it breaks. But you saw that I bent, it should, I bent it 90 degrees the other way. So you saw there's some flexibility. I'm not expecting it to break or shatter from just normal falls. And remember, we're going to be looking, these, these hair usually break off really easily on brittle resin, so nothing's broken. Let me drop her right on it. Yeah, she's not going to break. I, I, I would be shocked if she broke from that. This resin is, is a lot stronger than that. Um, but let's give her the toss. Uh-oh. Sorry. That toss, so after I threw her up, she fell probably about six feet. And she landed right on the hair I was talking about. Those did snap off. So let's see what it takes to get the ones that are a little thicker. See if I can, by throwing it right on it, pretty hard. And those ones, are, like, the really thin ones did snap off from the approximately six to seven foot fall onto a very hard surface. But these other ones, and this table, by the way, is not, it has some give, but it's not, it's nowhere near soft. It's, it's a hard surface. Um, so, not bad. I mean, almost.
Okay, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give her, you know, decently high marks for dropping. Uh, again, if you, as you saw, though, if you drop her six, seven feet onto a very hard surface, and see, the only thing that broke off there was the tip of that little hair. Any of the thick parts I don't think will break for a normal drop. So if you have a mini that doesn't have any real thin parts, like this Dragonborn actually doesn't have anything really, really thin. I, I would expect him to survive the... Uh, Like that didn't break anything off that piece. That piece was too thick. So this resin, you know, it's not it's not brittle, brittle. Um, it's nothing broke there either because I, I would hear it. So, but for me, all right, I do that for you guys because you know I, I actually handle my minis pretty carefully. So for me, it's all about how it prints out. And this this resin printed fantastic, way beyond my expectations. Uh, hats off, Saray. You guys told me you made. A resin that was good for minis and I believe you did and I'm gonna have to apologize now to everyone I was meaning to do to mix in 10 to 20 percent tenacious and see how that affected uh, the resolution of the print and then also these break tests and I did not realize I am out of the tenacious so I'm, I'm gonna have to order more and and do follow-up tests so I apologize for that that I I was out of tenacious and I didn't realize it so again my apologies to you guys for not being able to do that test uh, so I don't want to talk too much more about it. I mean, I think this resin is absolutely fantastic. And to me, it's more than tough enough. I mean, I honestly, I don't really expect minis to survive six to seven foot drops onto a hardwood floor. Uh, I mean, I guess there are some that do, but I've never seen one that combines this level of detail and, and that kind of level of drop protection. And... I mean, my, my minis that I have, and I have lots of them from Games Workshop, Forge World, any of these places, you drop them from six feet, I mean, that, that thing's donezo anyway. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not concerned. To me, this is, does more than well, on the, well enough on the brake test. Um, if, if, I can just, if I can knock it over banging around regular handling, it's not going to break, I'm fine with it. I know for, for other people, your kids might be handling them, your cat might be smacking it off the table, I don't know. So you might have to try you know, mixing some Tenacious into this. But in terms of if you want something that just prints, like ultra high detail, very true to what's trying to be printed, I think this is every, you know, every bit as good as the E-Packs hard. And I mean, it's hard to tell because I can't, even on the same printer, maybe some, there's some little factors you can't recreate exactly or change from print to print. But I can confidently say this is printing every bit as good as my E-Packs hard. And, and really, you know, when you look at the close-up high-res photos and you see the detail, I mean, yes, it's Sonic Mini 4K, gives you incredible detail, but the resins do matter because I've tested a bunch of resins on the Sonic Mini 4Ks and some of them, you know, are good, but, you know, nowhere near this level of detail. So the, the resin does matter, by the way, people. I know, I've seen some people posting, oh, resin doesn't matter, just your settings. That's actually not true. I mean, settings, of course, is where it all starts. But once your settings are correct, you know, for each resin, not all resins print the same. And this is one of those resins, to me, that, that just prints better than other resin. So that's it. I don't, I don't want to hold you guys too long to review. Let's look at close-up high-res photos. Um, I've highlighted some stuff on each pick that I think, you know, I just want to direct your eyes to some of the detail so you can pick it out. Here's the quarter I use in my photos so you can see the quarter. Not that you think I'm faking the quarter size, but it was just stuck there actually, so I figured I'd leave it. Uh, I have some bases here from a Kickstarter that's going to come out, not for a few months, but it's going to be a big one. It's going to be awesome. For all you guys who, the 3,000 people who backed Pit Fighter, this is going to be not a game this time, but it's going to be like Pit Fighter on steroids. Huge value, incredible sculpts, most of them coming from Chris Tackett, um, and, and just some stunning stuff. Anyway, that's it. Let's, let's take a look at the pictures and uh, see what you guys think. Thanks. So looking at this print, I mean, I used to look at the belt buckles on her arms, but those are so blisteringly clear, it doesn't make sense. So looking at the eyes, it's so clear on this print, as you can see, you can see where the sculptor kind of laid on the eyebrows and the eyelids almost as separate pieces. That's how clear they are. And then on the left armband, the, the etched pattern on that, I mean, look at the quarter next to it. It, it. That thing's way smaller than a letter on your quarter. And look how crystal clear it came out. It's amazing. So now let's look at the Dragonborn. So this Dragonborn, I mean, those holes on his, on his, across his chest on that leather strap, the holes are crystal clear even. 
Uh, and look at every single scale. Pick any scale. Just look how clear every single scale is totally defined and delineated. Uh, look at his fangs, his eyes. I mean, just everything on this sculpt screams. And this looks like a render. When if I pulled up the render of this figure, it looks like this print. I mean, that's how good it is. So this this resin just, you know, accuracy like this just means almost zero light bleed. There, you know, you're, you're it's printing what it's supposed to print. So that's about it. So anyway, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like, please subscribe. If you haven't, please check out my other videos. Uh, thanks and uh, happy 3D printing.